Ah, hello everyone. It is such a delight to once again sit down with you all and read through one of numerous books scattered across the realms of Tamriel. Seeing as we are heading towards the spookier side of the year, what better time than the present to read a few books whose content synergizes well with this truly spectacular and hair-rising season. Now have a seat. Make yourselves comfortable by the fire. Careful with the ale, as you might some joke on it. And immerse yourself within the dark and unforgiving forests of Skyrim, where large wolves and other terrible creatures scour its lands. And allow me, the narrator, to tell you a story. Legend tells of a woodcutter who built a shack deep within the pine forest. There he hoped to live in peace with his family. The woodcutter's family lived well for a time, but without warning, the weather turned bitterly cold and spoiled the harvest. Before long, with their meager supply of food all but gone, the family was starving. Late one snowy night, a traveler knocked on the cabin door, seeking shelter from the biting cold. Always generous of heart, the woodcutter welcomed the stranger into his home, apologizing that he had no food to offer. With a smile, the traveler cast off his cloak to reveal the garments of a mage. As the woodcutter and his family looked on, the mysterious visitor reached into his satchel and withdrew a scroll tied with a silver ribbon. No sooner had the wizard unfurled the scroll and read the words aloud when a great feast appeared from out of thin air. That night, nobody in the woodcutter's cabin went hungry. Day by day, the snow piled up. Every night, the mage produced another scroll from his bag and read the words, each time summoning a new feast. On the fifth night, the woodcutter's wife awoke her husband to confess her mistrust of her magical guest. Surely, she argued, there was some price to pay for the magical feasts that everyone enjoyed night after night. The woodcutter would have none of it. After nearly dying from the lack of food, his family was eating well. The divines had sent him a gift. He explained, and it was foolish to question their wisdom. But the woodcutter's wife would not be persuaded. Every night, she grew more fearful and more desperate. She was certain that the family had entered into a devil's bargain and the time would soon come when the mage would ask for something unspeakable in return for his gifts. While everyone in the cabin slept, the woodcutter's wife snuck out of bed and took her husband's axe in hand. She crept into the traveler's room and with one swing, lopped off his head. Suddenly, the wizard's disembodied head awoke. His eyes opened wide, and when he beheld his maimed body, he let fall a terrible cry. Awakened by the horrified scream, the woodcutter and his children rushed into the room, and gasped at the terrible sight of the decapitated mage. With his last gasp of breath, the traveler laid a fearful curse on the woodcutter's wife. After her mortal death, she was damned to rise once again and walk the woods alone, only to burn at the rising of the sun. To this day, those who walk the pine forest late at night tell tales of a weeping woman glimpsed between the trees. 
He carries a bloody axe, the stories say, and it's terrifying to behold. <sighs> well, that's that, I guess. I do find it foolish that the woodcutter's wife lobbed off the poor traveler's head, especially after offering them so many feasts. As someone who have traveled the lands of Skyrim quite a lot in his days, I must say that these scrolls cost a fortune. But did a mage really manage to curse the woodcutter's wife to such a degree? Truly, such magic is something a Daedric prince could only hope to do. There is no way, right? Well, it seems that the offer disagrees with me, since old Mogan, Zahn of Molag, made yet another book on this matter. I guess we shall have to wait to find out the next time. Uh, goodbye for now, and be vigilant out there. Vampires scour these lands, and their blood first is never satiated. Kind of like myself with these books. Tata.